Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon to all of you. Um, I know I have, um, I will try to be really brief, um, uh, but I would like to start by thanking Professor Kenga, Professor Wiener, for inviting us to take part in, in this project. Also to the Hungarian colleagues for, have, for organizing all this Congress, is, which is um, marvelous. And um, I will be dealing with, we structure our presentation following the questionnaire, and I will be dealing with the section on sustainable ownership, shareholder governance, and the first points of, uh, of the part on sustainable funding, portfolio governance, uh, while Professor Ragaman will cover uh, the rest of the section and, and the points on sustainable trading product uh, governance. Well, um, as far as engagement policies is concerned, it's clear that a Spanish lawmaker, as in other European jurisdictions, has opted for their um, comply or explain alternative in, in the same terms as, as the directive on shareholders' uh, rights, second, or the amendment of the, of the directive. <laughs> Um, directive, the directive and, and consequently so the Article 3G um, has been reproduced more or less in several provisions. I'm not boring you, but there are provisions on life, uh, well, on insurance and reinsurance companies authorized to operate in life, life insurance business, pension funds, uh, asset managers, youth aids, and other collective investing, uh, investment schemes, uh, asset, uh, asset managers, private equity, venture capital, close and then uh, ended uh, collective investment schemes, uh, and so on. Um, but as all the rules are more, more or less the same, um, and there are translations um, of the directive, uh, the important thing is that uh, this closure is all, also is only uh, foreseen through uh, the managers or the fund or asset managers and uh, in, the, in their websites. Uh, um, Spain has not yet taken steps uh, towards disclosure by other means and uh, therefore our, our first impression and not a conclusion would be that we have uh, disclosure, disclosure and, and nothing but disclosure. Uh, the same thing would theoretically apply to, to fund companies um, domiciled outside the European Union. Since uh, uh, the, the Spanish, uh, the National Securities Market Commission, uh, the CNMV, I will refer to that with the Spanish pronunciation, uh, has power that it, um, it must uh, expressly um, previously authorize any fund companies uh, who intend to uh, offer their services uh, to investors based in, in Spain. So theoretically, um, they could, um, we could refuse that authorization if, uh, if these companies are not subjects in their state of origin to specific regulations for the protections of interests of shareholders or other participants, participants similar to the Spanish regulation. And we could also consider if there are disturbances and the conditions of competition between these institu institutional investors and the ones um, that are based in Spain, which could be another issue relating to competition loot to have into account. But uh, I think the most important thing, uh, apart from that, is uh, if um, in, it's clear that uh, in order to develop an engagement policy, regarding the exercise of voting rights, um, mutual funds, other investors will have to coordinate with each other and major shareholders. And in this sense, I think the risk of mandatory bid under Spanish rules is really, really low. Um, it is true we have, unlike the directive in other jurisdictions like Italy or I think Denmark, as far as I, I have read in, in the paper, and under Spanish law, um, like in Germany, Austria, there's no need for acquiring shares. There could be a mandatory bid uh, just due to, um, merely due to acting in concert between um, different uh, shareholders, for instance, via shareholders' agreement. Uh, control in this sense uh, is defined uh, as uh, holding and individually or jointly with other persons acting in concert, um, at least or more over 30% of the total uh, voting, um, voting 
right in the in the target. Well, the acting in concern is defined in a similar way to other definitions I've had uh, here. And um, anyway, I consider um, well, in, uh, in, I consider that that's, uh, the risk is pretty very very low because uh, to that effect. To, the uh, purpose of a mandatory bid. Coordination between shareholders should be stable um, and uh, it has to be uh, intended to acquire the control of the company. Um, and besides, there's no duty, there's no mandatory bid at all where any of the shareholders of the company already held individually or jointly with other persons this same 30% of the voting rights or even more uh, in more general terms when the control structure of the company remains the same. And then unless they lose control because of that reason, there's no mandatory bid. In this regard, um, the possibility seems uh, very remote uh, because in, in other countries, uh, most Spanish listed companies are closely held. We have an, a concentrated uh, ownership structure in listed company, according to figures published by the, by the Fenemir Uber, the free flow of the list company in the years uh, between 2018 and 2020 is less than 45% on average, um, which means that uh, avoiding the investment in companies dominated by main or anchors uh, shareholders seems unrealistic. In more general terms, it's, uh, it's uh, the common view that, uh, that this prevalence of concentrated capital structure uh, plays against the engagement of institutional investors in hedge funds. However, there are some rules in, in Spanish Companies Act uh, that could empower as uh, activist shareholders uh, monitoring uh, of majority shareholders. In particular, it has been argued that Article 161 of Spanish Company Law that allows binding instructions by the shareholders to the directors or to subject to previous authorization, some of the director's decisions, management decisions, could be used by active shareholders at least uh, for bargaining power vis-a-vis -vis controlling shareholders and to find other ways of cooperation. The real problem seems uh, to be if uh, ESG objectives uh, can be achieved by shareholders voting at the meeting. And in Spanish practice, the question has been raised in relation to, say, on climate votes sponsored by managers or for some shareholders. <coughs> when we think about the role of uh, hedge funds in this, in this context, um, well, in principle, they are subject to similar rules to other funds. Um, they have, of course, special requirements and additional capital uh, requirements. But in Spain, it's not clear if they will be subject to the, to the same uh, rules on, on engagement policy. Uh, but in any case, the fact is that the most active um, um, in, in EC, ESG issues are precisely some hedge funds in Spain. Um, in, in the Netherlands, they have followed this. In, in Spain, we have followed Chris. And I'm talking about, maybe you have heard of of him is, is Chris Hon, or say Christopher Anthony Hon, which is a billionaire, a, a philanthropist, and he, he controlled and owned, well, uh, uh, founded and controlled um, a hedge fund, the Children's Investment uh, Fund, um, and he is um, he is in favour of cl uh, saying climate uh, votes. Um, actually, in in in, in 2019 and 22, he wrote and made public letters to CEOs of AENA and Ferrovial, and also the Spanish Environment Ministers in the Spanish state, owns 51% uh, of the sales of AENA. Due to this kind of, uh, of uh, pressure, in 2021, three uh, IBEX 35 companies, AENA, Ferrovial, and also Iberdrola, proposed climate action plans or strategies at their annual general meetings on an advisory basis and in all these cases, they obtain uh, a majority support uh, level of over 90% of, of, of the votes of the share, cap, uh, share capital. However, some dissenting, and that's, I think that's the clue, some dissenting shareholders uh, stated that the company's climate action strategy 
should be the responsibility of the board of directors and fear that shareholders voting on climate action plans could lead to in a, in a, uh, not proper climate strategies. These reservations are aligned with uh, the same lines as, as the doubts about say on climate voting, uh, which are in sorts. Um, they could be a distraction, facilitate green uh, washing and exempt directors from their responsibility. Nevertheless, it was expected, um, it was expected in, in 2022, uh, more companies will opt to include uh, proposals in this area, and uh, especially on advisory votes on emission reduction reports and approval of the climate change strategy. For the time being, on, on 31st March 2022, uh, INSA AGM has approved on, on an advisory basis the update report of climate action plan for the year 2021, with over, again, 90% of the votes in favour. And on the 7th of April, this year, the same year, the Robbie Alsa AGM also approved the company's climate strategy report with a similar percentage of votes in favour. Iverdrola AGM is still to be called. So, uh, for cooperation in order to be effective, it obviously also involves proxy advisors, and, uh, and it is indeed to, to be expected that conflicts of interest may arise. Um, there are some rules in, um, with origin in the directive, in Article 3J of the directive, I will, in the, in the uh, Securities Market Act in Spain. But I think the most important thing is uh, that uh, if we uh, look at practice in Spain, the main proxy advisor, or some of them, so we have the main proxy advisor would be Glass Lewis, ISS, and, and Corporate, which is the only Spanish and part of Prox Invest. But some of them do not seem precisely aligned uh, with the directors when it, when it comes to ESG issues, in particular Glass Lewis. And Glass Lewis, uh, which has uh, directly opposed say on, say, uh, say on climate votes, and in its policy guidelines for 2022, it is stated that sufficient information uh, is often not available for uh, shareholders and that the board may be abdicating some of this responsibility in this, in this matter. As a consequence, uh, for the INS AGM, um, on the, first, the 31st of March this year, Glass Lewis recommended uh, shareholders abstain and not vote in favour of this point because, say, for the same reasons I, I just mentioned. Well, at least um, I would say that uh, in, in these three cases, uh, Aena, Ferrovial, and, uh, and Iberdrola, uh, say on climate votes are expected to take place on an annual basis, which would allow the investors to assess um, the company's strategy over time. And from a legal point of view, uh, there's no doubt, in, according to Spanish, under Spanish law, that uh, management, even if a management decision is authorized by the shareholders at the general meeting, that's that does not exempt directors from their responsibility. We have a rule in, in this sense in, in companies act. And on the other side, there are also engagement. It's not, you know, it's not just voting. As I said, uh, at least this kind of tool could be, could force management, not just directors, but also main shareholders to communicate and to, uh, with uh, institutional investors or at least active uh, hedge funds like the one I mentioned. Um, on the contrary, uh, it's not expected that, that lending banks would cooperate in, in, in this process. There are not legal risk, uh, rules on credit covenants in, in Spain, no specific provisions uh, regarding ESG in this context. Uh, lending bank uh, will probably limit the influence uh, on the management of the company to avoid the risk uh, of being considered the factor or uh, shadow directors um, in, or even equivalent to significant shareholders uh, with the consequence of the subordination of the credits or loan in a hypothetical uh, insolvency proceeding concerning, uh, concerning uh, the company. In any case, lending banks and, and debt investors can only be included in the activist program via dialogue conducting. Um, several reports, sorry, we're here still. Uh, several reports 
um, on conflict governance uh, have recommended um, over the years greater involvement on institutional investors in, in, co in corporate governance of listed company, um, advising the board uh, to foster regular contacts with, uh, with uh, in investors and, and, and exchange opinions, establishing the channel to enable uh, them to provide valuable information and we have uh, right now, uh, sorry, yeah, and uh, we have now that in principle four of the of the good governance uh, code for for listed companies. But the fact is, you know, legal specific measures uh, uh, have been taken to further encourage that dialogue. We just, uh, as in, in the other case. We just simply, or the Spanish um, lawmaker just simply replicated provisions of, in this case, Article 3G, which was uh, my concern here, and I think it was just a really good question in, in, in the guideline uh, we received, is uh, how to reconcile this uh, dialogue cond conducting with, uh, with the duty, the principle of equal treatment of shareholders and also with the duty of confidentiality of directors and even with the provision of unlawful disclosure of uh, insider information tipping according to um, market abuse regulation. In this sense, um, that could be a reason because it's on all these reports I've mentioned on, on corporate governance. Uh, it was expressed nowadays as well in principle four of the good governance um, uh, code. Um, it is said that, um, that uh, these discussions between directors and large investors or even proxy advisors has to be reconciled uh, with uh, the, this provision of furnishing inside information and, and the principle of equal, of equal treatment. And uh, they said this is even um, quoted recital number 19 of the market uh, abuse regulation uh, that indicates that it does not intend, it's not intended to prevent discussions of a general nature regarding the business and the, and the management, well, even the market developments between shareholders and their directors. Well, the problem here would be what is to be considered uh, discussions of a general of a general uh, matter, um, and I think in this context, some opinions may be may be useful. It has been said that uh, representative or nominees uh, directors, uh, designated directors, can inform the shareholders who are appointing them because, compared to the rest of the, of, uh, the shareholders, uh, these ones are not in identical conditions. Uh, they are not in the same position as regards information stake or holding. Therefore, uh, there will be an exception uh, expressly uh, foreseen in, in these articles uh, of the Spanish Companies Act for general, for all kinds of companies and for uh, listed companies. Uh, the explanation is this kind of shareholders, and we could probably imagine that we will say the same to, to, to about uh, institutional investors when they are um, engaging and dialoguing on, on ESG issues. They play uh, a, a role in corporate uh, governance, monitoring directors and mediating the, the interests of different groups of shareholders. For block holders, in, or so-called block holders in this, in this model of corporate governance, uh, to fulfill this, uh, this, uh, this function, Sure, they, they need they need that, that that information. They need information, and in the same vein, communications or uh, to, from the directors to blockholders would not represent unlawful disclosure of inside information or tipping, because the disclosure would be made in the normal exercise of their duties of directors' duties in the in the set, in the terms of the exception, uh, which is foreseen in in Article 10. Uh, point one of the market abuse regulation. But some of the provisions of the directive and then this, um, this article 3G.1, when, when it establishes that uh, institutional investors and asset managers 
shall describe in their engagement policy how they monitor invest, uh, investee companies on relevant matters. I think that, that we reinforce this version or this model of uh, block corporate governance. Um, well, on sustainable funding portfolio governance, I just will say two things, I know. <coughs> it, is, it seems clear that uh, the development of uh, an engagement on dialogue policy depends on the on the previous uh, investment policy. And in this regard, uh, Article 3H uh, of, the, uh, of the Directive on, on shareholders, Shareholder Rights too has been implemented as well in different, in different provisions. Um, and uh, still the most important rule, I think, is uh, Article 3.1 of the Disclosure Regulation, SF, SFDDR. Well, what I would say here is just uh, that regarding the co possible conflict uh, between ESG compliant and, and uh, investment decision process and risk avoidance, uh, we have these principles, obviously, these principles of quantitative and qualitative risk uh, diversification in different Spanish, Spanish rules. Mm, there hasn't been any amendment uh, due to uh, these new rules, which at least will uh, lead to think that uh, Spanish lawmaker um, is convinced that um, they could be compatible with with these uh, amendments, with these uh, last, last amendments. Um, we have two different kind of limits. Um, I think similar to to the ones I had before. So limits to the investment depending on the total on the total <laughs> assets of the UFIT and limits to investment depending on the securities of the same user. And in that and that's I just wanted to say this, um, that these restrictions are, the last ones, uh, refer to the direct influence on the company, not to cooperation, not to dialect conducting, and that we have to, well, it's important to take uh, into account the rights of minority shareholders in listed companies that are activated uh, from over 3% uh, 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 of the uh, share capital, and like uh, adding uh, items to the agenda, calling or requesting directors to call the, uh, the meeting. And, that, and then I have, that right now, I hand uh, to Are you giving me five minutes I have? Okay, uh, so I will make it macro brief, then uh, I will have necessarily to skip some things, I imagine. Uh, therefore, um, yeah, I think I will go down to here. Um, so the um, tackling two issues, if I have five minutes on product governance, um, Regarding the state of the regulation in Spain, it has to be said that the um, identification of the adequacy of the financial instrument, including analysis of the distribution channel, remains as it was before uh, till now. There is a penalty for infringement, obviously, and delegated directive 2021 has not been um, transposed yet. So uh, regarding that issue, we cannot have any, any findings here. No alteration so far whatsoever also on the subject of formal product release regarding target market determination by our CNMV practitioners, however, have said that um, when foreseeing the interpretation of uh, 2021, that considerations of sustainability have to be also connected to other circumstances of the client. So in line with ESMA regulation, so understanding how my colleague was saying this morning, David, um, uh, sustainability, like making a whatsoever one group um, which we all fit in in a neutral way, if we can say, and, but that needs to have into consideration other issues like uh, risk, uh, precisely, and, and uh, from a more uh, um, fundamental perspective, because as, as David was saying in this moment, if not, MIFID idea, as we know, it will implode, at least from the Spanish perspective. Sustainability is a, is a, is a group, but cannot erase all the other, all the other construction of the system uh, um, in the issue of monitoring distribution and connecting that to the best interests of the client, uh, we don't even have 
in Spain uh, that developed doctrine on the best interest of the client itself. So uh, to expect us to have uh, that issue in sustainability is we are lacking the first step. Um, not particularly the retention, I would say, however, asset managers are starting to take it into consideration in their, in their um, information. So big SMA, Santander, the Banco Santander uh, management assets uh, are already having it mentioned in their, in their information. So uh, they are ahead the, the, the topic. Um, for the for the for the distribution of fund units uh, whatsoever that are the rest, what we have right now is that general monitoring rules still apply. Reconsideration of appropriateness um, will be um, necessary if the if the regulation changes when the fund unit is already being being um, distributed, and obviously um, transparency in that in that regard. Um, the same uh, in regarding the impact of asset management on the attractiveness of, of offering of shares, the, the, the issue of fees that uh, you were discussing. Um, question above uh, average management fees are charged for managing sustainable portfolios. Our commission establishes which is chargeable and which is not. It's chargeable uh, whatever cost on the disclosed original and significant sustainability analysis relating to the investment decision making should not be charged, on the other hand, costs that, co that correspond to functions assumed by the fund manager. Um, brown listing in Spain? Uh, no, not so far. Uh, the strategy uh, in connection with sustainability hasn't reached so far. Um, Considering non-inclusion of particular complex high-risk products, conflict of interest situation, what we already have before. So nothing in particular with uh, regarding sustainability, uh, not even the issue of, of, of taking the, the not, not to think of the issue of taking a traded already um, unit out of the, or of the market. Um, the, the big um, elephant in the room, as one was saying this morning, the steering the the private investors towards sustainable products, um, I don't think they are even thinking on that problem in Spain. I actually think that they expect us to do that. So what the Commission is saying is we, we, we have this huge problem, it has to be looked at, the world is ending in a way, like my time here, and um, we have to do something. So I'm not preoccupied so much of the steering, I am preoccupied about this being just a trap to make us think we are doing something. Um, we have um, in our report issues about liability of consumers, uh, possibility of, of, of uh, uh, suing the managers. We will have that in the paper whatsoever. Um, as I don't have so much time, uh, obviously, I will move to the end because I want to say something. Um, in an anecdotic way as my presentation today here. Um, I want to say that uh, our commission says you have to have 50% of your assets traded to be sustainable. Okay, uh, not so clear how we are going to calculate that, but we will work on that. However, we, we, um, there are rules already on how can you put easy ESG sorry, on, the, on your naming. There are also rules on how you can put it on your marketing and how the marketing has to mirror the portfolio. Um, and there are um, indexes. So we have the good IBEX 35, the one that follows the financial, uh, so the FST, yeah, FST group, uh, IBEX 35, good so called. Um, are you concerned about the steering of the of the of the of the um, capitals there? The good Ibex has um, performed better than the Ibex uh, last year. Um, so if we think that consumers uh, will go where the profit goes, oh, I mean, good. It was um, my friend Felix was saying before. Let's do profit and let's do good. Let's do green. Profit and green, but the uh, question is who enters these indexes? So the, the Financial Times index says you have to rate 3.1 over 5 to be admitted in the index. Okay, I was checking just this morning and with this I finish. Uh, this company, this, this paper um, uh, producing paper past, I don't know how to say it in English, called ENFE, <laughs> is in the good IBEX 35. Um, Enfe, if you go to where I'm from, northwest of Spain, in Galicia, is the most polluting company there. 
it's terrible. You see this fantastic view, and in the middle, it's a, like a thing that doesn't belong there. It belongs like in the 50s. And it has renewed its, its license to still operate, and because people there want the jobs. So it's not so much about green or not green, it's about having jobs. The thing is terrible, the thing is so, no one, I, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Denmark will, will allow that. I, would, I wish to think German, uh, Germany wouldn't allow that, neither would Denmark. This ENF company has made the good Ibex 35. So, so I imagine what they have there looks good. How, what, what docu documents they present to, the, to this climate index looks good. So I'm not so much concerned about fast and furious, I'm concerned about fast and phony. So let's not do it phony, let's do it for real. Maybe a little bit slowlier, I don't know. Let's do something, but do it good. Because if not, here we're losing money, losing time, and uh, also a little bit warm. So thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. I'm very pleased. Thank you for bringing me in the, into the project. And let's have some fun, because we are earning it.